Well, it's time for another gardening week and it's going to be a short week this week. I've been out hiking most of the week and uh, doing a bit of cycling, but and it's very, it's very windy and it's been pretty rainy as well. But harvests are really coming in. I'm really enjoying that. I've done a video of last week's harvest, actually, you'll see that. But uh, yeah, I'm picking a lot of tomatoes uh, and processing those. I might show you a bit of processing actually later on in the video and uh, picking all the beans and I like my beans I like to pick them a bit small um, I think they're just a little bit tenderer the smaller runner beans and the French beans as well so uh, yeah every other day picking beans and once a week really I think picking tomatoes um, as I say you know these particularly are looking pretty great now uh, and I've just harvested them and those, the Zamazano, are kind of just on the verge of <laughs> acceptable. Um, yeah, not, not great really, but um, I think I'm gonna transition over from Zamazano now to these Crimson Plum. I like these Crimson Plum quite a lot. Um, kind of a multi-purpose in my mind. They're really nice just eating fresh off the plants, uh, but they're also a good paste tomato, sort of a, as I say, kind of multi-purpose. Loads of courgettes, of course. I, I might have a couple of melons next week. <laughs> so out of six beds that I originally planted, six, six plants that I originally put in, I think I might have got maybe three melons. So it makes me wonder whether I should reduce the number of melons that I do next year. And then of course it will be a brilliant melon year, um, but that's just the way of it. But whether it's worth you know, committing such a large space to a plant that's so dependent on growing conditions, which are so variable, I'm not sure it makes sense. Anyway, I'm gonna head home. As I say, do a bit of process then, I think. Actually, before I go, I just close, I've just had closed up all my low tunnels. So it's so, still so sunny with showers and high winds, which is the most difficult situation to manage with a low tunnel. I'm leaving them just with this small gap here. Um, there is a danger if the wind gets really high, it gets under here and just whips these tops off, rips them off. Um, and so I might have to come back tomorrow and close them up even more because we've got southerly winds which will blow straight in here and pretty high, maybe up to 50 miles an hour or something like that. So yeah, that is better sort of managed when these are completely closed. But when it's kind of sunny like this, Obviously, the plants are going to complete, really bake in there uh, if these are completely closed. So I've given them a water to sort of help them manage that situation a little bit better. But they're all on that kind of three inch setting. And uh, I'm kind of hoping that's going to be OK for today. And yeah, it's, it's a, it is a challenge, I always find, you know, getting it right but so far I've only ever had one tunnel rip off completely uh, but I've had a few sort of rip off the hinges and had to be sort of repaired um, and obviously a few tears and things like that the polytunnel is a little bit easier to manage generally um, I just close the doors up sort of like that and just hope for that wind will just blow through them so I've arrived home and this is what our kitchen normally looks like. Basically, these are all the bits that are harvested that need to go into the fridge uh, for harvest day. And as I say, I'm kind of harvesting every other day at the moment. Uh, so, you know, all these things keep fine in the fridge and they'll keep for another week uh, once we sort of uh, dole them out to our family. And then we're doing this bit of preserving, and this is the recipe that I'm following, roasted tomato passata. And this is from River Cottage Handbook number two. So it's by Pam Corbin, but you know, it's kind of firmly with us with and stall branded. Um yeah, so it's a nice little recipe. We don't just use the sugar here, so I'll just pop a photo of that up so you can see it. But um, yeah, and we're using uh, oregano there. Uh, 
So, all my ingredients. Got my shallots from the store. So I'm just pick using the used now ones. Um, and uh, yeah, 500 grams of those. A couple of uh, bulbs of garlic. And just, yeah, oregano that we dried last, oh gosh, in 2022, but still seems to be in good condition there. And salt and pepper. And olive oil. And we have two fridges, and this is our overspill fridge. And this is the one basically where we store things that aren't going to be used very often. Uh, kind of like spare bottles of milk and stuff like that. And so you can see you more beans here, more courgettes here, uh, probably <laughs> more beans here. We're getting a lot of beans. We might actually have to freeze a few beans. So just enough space in there. There we go. And we have a lot of these containers. We literally have hundreds <laughs> or hundred plus of these containers. And we bought them when they were on offer at Home Bargains, one pound each. And they're now direct from Addis or on Amazon, I think they're about five pounds. So we're filling up, we're getting on this week, uh, but I've still got lots of space at the door, so uh, not to worry. So that's me, tomatoes, chopped. And now I just need shallots. So pick some shallots and just again, going to my use now shallots, uh, getting rid of all those. Chop those up nice and thin and crush the garlic and then slice it up and pop it into the tray. Yeah, I also sometimes add uh, pepper. And so that actually is probably enough pepper to do a couple of trays. So I'll chop that one up as well. Time to go in the oven. I always love it when it's like this. I think, I think it always looks at its best before it's cooked. And uh, yeah, so come back in an hour. That was in the oven. I've just done another tray, and this one's got that lovely orange pepper as well. A giant one. So while that sauce is cooking, I thought I'd just check on some of the seedlings. So I've got a batch of lettuce here, uh, which I've just got under grow lights just for a few days until it gets pricked out um, because it's too hot in the greenhouse at the moment <clears throat> for little seedlings and it's a bit of a risk putting this outside on my seedling bench uh, because of this, the risk of losing these to slugs and snails and things. But uh, once they get a bit bigger and a bit more established, I'll put them out in the greenhouse and they should be fine. It's cooling down a bit now. I have got a lot of stuff though out on my seedling bench uh, and more mature plants I've got in the greenhouse as well um, that uh, don't mind the heat so much. Um, but I do, even those lettuces and things and radishes and things like that, I do put them outside on the bench if it's a really hot day. And there's my watch just bleeping to say that the uh, sauce is ready. Right, they're done. We can go in. So I'm just going to drain the stock into here. And we just generally freeze that uh, and use it for stock. And this all needs to go through the moule. So. You know, this whole thing, this whole process is a couple of hours work. It's just a lot of work, really. You just have to kind of consider it to be a very meditative activity. Uh, you definitely can't find a cost benefit analysis, really. <laughs> making your own sauces by this laborious technique. There we go. It shouldn't 
really surprised me that, uh, but it always does, that probably six and a half kilos of ingredients kind of translates into just that little bit of waste. I'm sure there are, I think we, Debbie has tried using that sort of pulp for, you know, dehydrating it and whatever and trying to find a use for it, but I don't think it's uh, proved to be very popular. And uh, plenty of stock and quite a lot there. Pretty good harvest of sauce. So I'm not gonna bother showing you canning it because there's like hundreds of canning videos, uh, but I'll show you the finished product when it's all done. So this is one of those jobs in gardening that you really can't cost justify. You know, when you factor in the time and the you know equipment and the heat from the oven and you know all that but it's for me part of a lifestyle that money can't buy so i'm back on the plot to do the harvest it's still quite windy outside so i'm going to stay in here for a minute um yeah so we had quite a storm in the middle of the week really uh, pretty bad my plot survived pretty well i'm pretty pleased with it just a few bits and pieces kind of fell over but i've got those tied up now uh, particularly the yakon. I don't think we've ever had the yakon fall over before. Um, and Debbie's plot, again, pretty good. Just a few brassicas kind of knocked over and things like that, but uh, generally okay. Unfortunately, you know, you can't say the same for the whole site. Quite a lot of polytunnels pretty much destroyed. Um, people ask me why I spent a thousand pounds on this polytunnel when you can get the kind of green or white kind of uh, woven, not woven, but sort of... Um, I don't even know how to describe them. Anyway, the green and white ones uh, for maybe a few hundred pounds. And it's survivability during the winter winds, really. And we had kind of winter winds in summer uh, last week, this week. So, um, yeah, it's really sad when you see that happen. But it happens all too often on this site. You know, it does get pretty windy. Not extremely windy, you know, 65 mile an hour winds, something like that is probably about the maximum. But really it's only this sort of polytunnel that survives that sort of level of wind most of the time there are a few people in sheltered plot spots on this site where they've got those green polytunnels and they've actually survived you know three or four years uh, but they're the lucky ones so uh, i'm gonna get on with the harvest there we go i'm all done it always takes me a couple of hours to get the harvest done but we do kind of like to get it done really on like a Saturday and then we'll, the kids all come round and collect the veg. It's really nice and a few friends come round and all that. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of like an event really, harvest day. Uh, this time of year, obviously things like the beans, you know, all those are beans there. You know, I'm picking those every other day, if not every day really. Uh, same with the courgettes. But most of the things, cucumbers, you know, there's a few things that get picked every day, every other day, but most of it gets picked on Saturday, weather dependent. So I'll just quickly talk you through. So yeah, great big pile of beans, pyra pyramid of beans, uh, a bit of spinach, a couple of boxes, two boxes of courgettes, uh, lots of kale, lovely kales there. Um, and sweet corn, we picked a few of these a bit young, um, because they're falling over in the wind, because we had quite a nasty storm. But uh, yeah, still very nice. Uh, charred peppers, really nice collection of peppers, including some real beauties. Look at the size of those, absolutely enormous. Probably can't even tell how big that is. Look, that's, I'll put it in my hand, just to get a better idea. Gorgeous, and little ones as well and lots of colours. I do work really quite hard to try and get a colourful table every week of the year and uh, it's a lot easier in summer. So yeah, potatoes for just from the store, we're just working out our way through ones in the store at the moment, although we've got loads still in the ground. And I'm losing a couple of squashes. So these are they're still edible, but you know, they won't ever mature. So there's no point leaving them on the plants, taking them off. And uh, 
just munching through those. Uh, we've got some beetroot and lovely carrots. These are, <laughs> believe it or not, baby sugar snacks. Well, you know, that is not a baby carrot, but it is a nice carrot. And they do, we do have some smaller ones. I use the smaller ones in salads. In fact, I've got, I don't know, six or seven tubs of these baby sugar snaps growing, uh, primarily for salad carrots, as well as all the ones that I've got in the ground. A couple of them are split in a little bit, but uh, you know that's just kind of inevitable with a summer carrot when you leave it in the ground and then you have lots of rain. Um, red cabbages looking pretty good. And because, as always, I love these little pups here, a little bit of slug damage on the odd one of them, but yeah, these are still the ones I want to eat. And gorgeous cauliflowers. We're kind of back now in flowering brassica season. So we primarily eat our, get our flowering brassicas from about April through to about sort of July. And then we have a few weeks where we don't have any and now we're back in uh, flowering brassica land which is nice. Uh, leeks, some leeks, got a few weeks of those left. Uh, cucumbers and more cucumbers. I've left a lot on actually because I want to pick them for next week's harvest. Um, as it is cooling down a little bit and so the cucumber production rate will probably drop a little bit. Uh, globe artichoke, which just picked as flower decorations. Uh, yeah, salad onions. Tomatoes, pretty nice harvest of tomatoes there. Uh, we did make, and oh, I showed it in this video, didn't I? Some uh, passata as well. Just a few more little um, peppers. These are from the greenhouse. The greenhouse ones are pretty much finished, to be honest now. So I'm quite excited about the possibilities of taking all those out and trying to think what I can put in their place. Because I was hoping they would last a little bit longer but then these are doing so well. I'm not really worried about peppers, so. Uh, just a little selection of fruit there, some conference pears, some Concord pears, some Victoria plums, and just a range of different apples. I can't remember all the varieties of those. And the golden pears lane for the salads, two tubs of that. One tub, I just picked one tub of spinach for the salads. I, I'm the one that really likes the spinach in the salad, so I don't need too much of that. So I'm gonna make up those salad boxes as always and call it a day. My name's Steve, this is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.